I always felt that Blender was very good at text animation compared to After Effects. The only issue was that there were no tools to do the animation for you. So uh, this story is just to show you how you can do these types of animations using Blender. Now you can do this without an add-on, but it's going to be really, really tricky for you. And it's going to take you quite a lot of time to do this. Uh, but I've made my own add-on just to help me out. And uh, this is what I'm going to be showing you. Most text animation like this is usually done in After Effects. And in, but uh, Blender lacks those tools that makes After Effects really good at this. And uh, yeah, I decided to just create a few of mine to make the process simpler. I'll be leaving links for you to download this. I'm using Blender 5.0. And uh, we're going to start right away in the text editor. Let's use subscribe. And uh, I have an option to select the font here, but I like this first font. So I'm going to use create text. Uh, if you have any issues, uh, like uh, you see at first, sometimes uh, the, the text converted has a lot of uh, vertices that are close to each other. You can select them and use Ctrl X to dissolve them. And uh, that can reduce some, any errors that might come up. For example, here you can see some artifacts and uh, yeah, you can just select those Ctrl X uh, to remove the vertices there and uh, it should uh, look smooth. One of the issues that makes makes it really hard to animate text in Blender is because that you don't have access to individual letters or you can't animate the letters individually. So what I've done, I have added a rig option to rig the characters or the letters of any word with bonds. I can change the length of the bond. So let's say 0.3. This is just for visual representation it doesn't really affect the animation rig text and that should add a bone for every for every letter and you can see i can move uh, the letters individually uh, which is amazing so let's start really working on the animation now let's start with a simple wave animation of uh, let's say this letter jumps up and then the rest follow for this i can just grab the first letter i can go to frame maybe 24 and Press K, insert location, rotation, and uh, scale uh, the keyframe. And then I go back to frame one, scale it down, push it down here. Just add keyframe recording here. So if you play back, you can see this rises up. And I'm going to also increase my frame rate to 60 so that I have really smooth playback. Perfect. Now I can uh, go back to this. So I have that. Maybe this should jump up and then down and you scale it up so you can create the animation you want for the first letter and then then select all the amateurs under animate i have the option to copy the animation of the active letter so this letter which is already animated i can copy that animation to all the other letters now i have a few options here to how you can copy for the most part you want to use the exact copy which will give you uh, let me see and uh, make sure you also have all the keyframes selected otherwise it will just copy over the first keyframe so copy exact copy okay now you can see they are all jumping at the same time but remember we want that wave animation uh, for that i can scroll down and you'll see that uh, we have offset keyframe and uh, so i can go to the first keyframe and uh, there is also an option to select the order of the offset so if you want this from to start from the right you can change that from reverse order active fast or random but if we want later order and then click offset you also have to change the number of frames you want to be offset so let's say 10 offset and now you can see we get that animation and that is something i've done in less than a minute and uh, you can also change the animation say for example if you wanted to add something else all you have to do is go back to the pause mode, select all of these, just go back to frame one, and uh, there is an option to clear the offset, and uh, that way they all go back to the original animation. Now I can go back to the first animation, focus on the first animation, and maybe up here, let me just add, maybe, yeah, do a backflip like that before it falls. And let me add some spacing. I can select all the other bones and first get rid of the, their animation. And then I can copy these keyframes again using the same steps. Copy exact, copy to selected, just like that. And now I can do another offset. So I can do a random first and then offset. And see now they're randomly getting the animation. Let me first clear that and use the reverse order offset. Uh, that way they start from the back. I clear that later order offset. And now they're starting from the order of other letters. Any type of animation you can do, you can do it with these simple steps. 
So I can even delete all the animation. I can delete the animation again. And at this time, let's try making this animation we see here. That. So we start off at the center. So I'll mark the frame. And then at frame 15, we go back to the original. Uh, if you want to go back to the original location, just use Alt G to clear the location. And so we have that. I want to copy the same animation over to the other objects. So I'm just going to select all of them and then copy exact like that. And you can see this has a bit of an offset, but I want all the letters to start where the S is. I have some operators here that can let you copy over the current location and set a keyframe for that. So if I want all of these to start where the S is, I can use copy to select it to copy the current location of the S. And that way you can see I get exactly that. So let me try and uh, repeat this for you guys. So first thing that happens is that uh, you make the animation you want. So for example, here I want uh, the letter S to start where this cursor is. So I can move it there at frame one. And then at frame 15, I want it to go back. I want it to go back to its original position. So Alt G, which clears at the current location and gets me that. Now I can copy over this animation using the copy to selected copy to selected just like that but it has an offset though it's, it appears like a sliding effect so what I can do is go to the first frame of the characters of all the characters and make sure they are using the same position as the S so I can select everything and make sure that the S is the active and then use the operator copy to selected to copy the location of the selected and now I get that you can even animate the text to follow some curves like what I'm doing here you can see that uh, the, the texts are following some curve. So let's do that. At first, I'm going to just delete all of the curves, all of the animation, and uh, add a curve. Uh, let me just use a bezier here. Now I can just scroll down. I can select everything, add path constraint. Now we just need to select a target. With all the bonds selected, you can hold on Alt and go to the target and select the bezier curve you have. I can do that. And now all the letters should follow the curve and I can even animate. If you hold on Alt, you can even animate all of them to follow the curve at the same time. And in fact, let's keyframe everything. So at zero, they start at the, they at the top here. I can keyframe that and at 45, hold on Alt to change all the values at once and add a keyframe. And you can see now they're all following uh, the curve, but uh, the positioning is not exactly the way we want it. So I can go back to frame zero and use the compensate location and compensate rotation. That way I have something like that, but I want that to be the final position, not the starting position. So here I want to compensate rotation and compensate location. And I'm also going to keyframe the rotation and location. Now, if we go back, also running into another issue because now these have an offset. That's why they don't really follow the curve as we want. But you can see that letter S is following the curve exactly as we want. So we can go back to maybe frame 40 uh, because at the end here, we want the final position to be this. So I'm going to come here and actually move the letter S to be exactly where, how I would expect it to follow the curve in the middle like that. But you can see at, at frame 45, it goes back to the original position I need it to be in or the final position it needs to be in. And uh, what I'm going to do is copy over, copy the location of S at frame 40. Basically, I want all the other letters to use the same location so that they are following the curve as expected. So I'm going to go back to admit and uh, we can use the lock. Uh, this copy selected. And um, yeah, now all the letters should follow uh, the curve until frame 45 to go back to its original a position. From there, all I have to do is use the offset option to offset everything. So I can come to the offset, select all the keyframes and offset, let's say by 10, left order, letter order, and that's okay. And take a look at that. Very, very simple. So if you want to do backgrounds like this, it's very, very easy. All you have to do is uh, set up your camera. Um, I'm going to go to the wall and just make it black. The background, I'm going to just use the compositor. Then go to 
set it to be always here and set up a new compositor. I'm going to use a gradient like you're seeing here. So I'm going to use a gradient just like that. And uh, it should be mixed uh, mixed with the image. So mixed color. So this is going to be the background and the image is going to be uh, the foreground. The offer channel is going to be the factor. For the offer channel to work, we need to go to uh, the world and a film, turn on transparency. If I take a look at this, you should see the subscribe, the subscribe text. But I want this to be spherical like that. And uh, to fade these colors a bit, I'm going to use the ramp and I can choose any color I want, or I can use another mix color and set this as the foreground and just change the color here. And I can use, set this to multiply. Uh, that way I can adjust the colors I want. And for the text, for the text itself, if you select it, you can either use the outline, which just gives you a flat surface like this, or extruded to give you an extruded text. But since we're just ex going to render this flat like this, I can just use it flat and I give this a new material. It can just be an emission shader so that we can easily see it. And there you can see that. And uh, if you want to, to add these shapes, those are the easiest. You can just use a circle. Basically the usual modeling we do extrude this. Yes duplicate this and I wanted this to be a bit on the offset on the side just like that and uh, I can offset the rotation of this so if I unmade this you can you can add some nice rotation and uh, I can also add a light let me just use a spotlight make this bigger and uh, you can even make this faded by using using a diffuse and a transparency so everything, basically After Effects can do, Blender can do even better. Go back to the compositor, make this a bit, a bit darker, just like that. Let me slow this down. You can come in, add some motion, motion blur, and uh, you're good to go. So that's how I made this animation. And uh, the add-on also has an option to rig, uh, to rig the, uh, the characters by word, and that's how I animated this version. Thanks for watching. If you want to get the add-on, you can find it on Gumroad or my Patreon.